glad I only went two minutes over. Melissa's our next speaker. She does a great job. She's going to talk uh, today, uh, and she, we've, she's been a, a big fan of Metastock. Uh, well, we've been a big fan of Melissa, let me say it that way. She's been in several of our events. She's a regular. We love to have her, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, Melissa, how are you doing today? Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You're coming through good. Great. Let me go ahead and get you, get you a presentation screen. Okay, let's see. Okay, I just made you the presenter. So it should uh, be harassing you to share your screen. And I will let you know when we can see it. And we can see it. Wonderful. Thanks so, much. Thanks so much. I, I know we're starting just a little bit late. Sorry about that. But the floor is all yours. You got it. Thank you so much. Well, great presentation by Jeff. And for those of you that are looking for a cost-effective way to scan, Jeff definitely has it. He was talking about Bloomberg. You could pay upwards of $30,000 a year for all the bells and whistles if you want Bloomberg's information. So what Jeff offers actually is very economical for the amount of information you get for the cost. And anybody that trades is always looking for what? For the picks, for, for ways to find the picks. So today we're gonna talk about how you can find the right pick. And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Melissa Armo. I own my own company, it's called The Stock Swoosh. And today we're going to talk about trading on the side of institutional money and gaps. And I will explain what a gap is. For those of you that don't know what a gap is, I'm going to explain it today. And it's a great weekend to discuss trading and even to have this presentation because why? The market had a crazy day on Friday, an absolutely crazy day on Friday, a big sell-off. And of course, everyone's looking forward to this coming week, and especially Monday morning, to see really where is the market going to be gapping. And if you have questions, you can plop them in the room. I can see the questions on the side. Feel free to just ask me any questions as we go along. I also appear on TV, and of course, I've been talking all year, really, about the market sell-off. The last time the market made brand new all-time highs was January. Hard to believe. Here we are. It's nine months into the year, one more week left in September, and we, we're nowhere near the highs. And in fact, we keep falling. If you'd like more information after today's presentation, you can call me at 929-3200-GAP, or you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com, and you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. I do put my TV hits on there as well. Again, we've been talking a lot about everything that's been happening. Fears of a recession. Some people say we already are in a recession. Obviously, everyone's aware of the fact that we're in a period of inflation, and now we have on top of that what's going on with Russia and Ukraine, which I think was also weighing on the markets besides higher interest rates on Friday. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later, too. Before I get started, I wanted to put the stats for this year. This is year to date through actually just a couple days ago through the 20th for the live trading room. So far, year to date, with this with an average risk of $2,800 per trade, these are equity trades, which means what? These are trades you would take on margin. We are gonna talk about equity trades today, and we're also gonna talk about options. But so far, year to date, if you were in the live room risking $2,800 per trade, you could have made over half a million dollars a year, and the year isn't over. I do specialize in shorting, and we are gonna discuss that today. So this has been a particularly good year for us in the room. Why? There's been a lot of short opportunities. In fact, we shorted the market on Friday. We shorted the QQQs, and we've been shorting the Qs, and we've been shorting this buy, and guess what? It's been gapping, so it's been working. Again, we're gonna talk about day trading and options today. So some of you may be doing options, some of you may not be trading at all. And again, if you're here and you're new, that's okay. Uh, you can feel free to ask me any questions as we go along. But if you're interested in trading, it's actually a real job if you take it seriously. I've been teaching people for 10 years now. I've had the business of stock switch for 10 years. I've been trading for 14 going on 15. And a lot of people that I've come across don't take trading seriously enough. It really doesn't matter whether you're doing it full time or whether you're doing it part time. You still have to take it seriously if you want to be successful. And the same thing goes for how much money you risk. Whether you're risking $100 a trade or $2,800 a trade, you still should take it seriously because every single dollar that you put on in a trade, you could lose. So you want to take it seriously so that you can actually win. And remember, trading is not investing, okay? Retail traders are struggling this year in 2022 because the market has been falling off. And retail traders love to go long. In fact, they prefer to go long than short. But I'm going to talk today about shorting. 
I'm gonna talk about gaps and I'm gonna be talking about shorting because actually shorting gives you a niche. So you must have an edge, if you can call it an edge, you can call it a niche, to be successful in the market. Why? Everybody's in the market, everybody's doing something, going long, going short, everyone is risking money and they're all going after the same thing, okay? So every time you make money in a trade, you're taking that money from somebody else. When I make money, I'm taking that way from somebody else that that person's losing and I'm winning, okay? So you really have to have an edge against other people if you wanna be successful. And what we're gonna talk about today, specifically not just shorting, but also gaps I've found has given me that edge. But this is a, this is a chart this is a chart here as of Friday's close. This is the SPY. This is the ETF for the S&P. What I have found, okay, in today's markets, and this year we're in 2022, it is really important to know what to do. I think it's important to know what to do all the time, but in this market environment, you really need to know what to do, okay? There were people, actually, this was Friday's close, that went long into the bounce, Friday into the four o'clock bounce into the close, okay? That was crazy to me. I watched it happen, all right? We made money, like I said earlier, to the downside, but people actually went long on Friday into the close, expecting the market to bounce into Monday, and we did have a tail. This little taily thing here is a bounce. But the fact is that if you don't know why you're going long, again, many people are just buying dips. That's what many retail traders do. That does not consistently work to make money. And that's not a niche. And you have no edge if you're doing that at all. So you have to really think like a professional. You have to think like someone that is sitting at a trading desk. I just mentioned Bloomberg. You have to think about someone that is high profile, risking a lot of money, has a lot of access to a lot of resources, is making very important decisions and taking it seriously, okay? So you have to think like a professional. You must have a reason to take the trades that you're gonna take. And you have to have a reason to risk money. It can't be because you wanna buy the dip. It can't be because, I'm just gonna go back here really quickly, it can't be because you think the market can't go any lower. Because guess what, it can. I'm not saying it will, but I'm saying it can. Do you know what I mean? So again, that's why buying on Friday into the close, the bounce, was really, in my opinion, not a wise thing to do. You have to have a reason why you're taking the trades. So one of the things that I look at, okay, is momentum. We've had a lot of momentum this year to the downside. Training momentum gives me an edge, why? Because I can place a small, medium, or even a large risk and get a big move and make a lot of money. That means percentage-wise, do you know what I'm saying? Meaning you can risk $500 and make 1,000, all right? Percentage-wise, that's a good return. That gives you an edge too, because a lot of traders scalp. They risk $500 to make $100. That, in my opinion, is not a good trade. So you need a system that is gonna have big winners. Why? Because you will have some losers. There is no 100% win ratio system where you always win. That's impossible, okay? You have to look at every trade with a set risk, knowing that you will lose on certain trades, but you still have to win on more than you lose, and you need some big winners, all right? So momentum trading is where it's at, especially if you're an individual trader. Momentum trading is one of the most profitable and fastest ways to make money trading. Learn how to take a position in stock in anticipation that the stock will have an explosive move. These enormous moves happen in one direction and happen really fast, and we saw that Friday in the market. It was to the downside. Momentum trading is very profitable, and that's how you can make big money in the market. And again, you can get in and out, in and out. What do I mean? I mean quickly. I mean in several minutes. If you're in a day trade or if you're in an option in 24 to 48 hours or even a week, we're doing the weekly options, okay, which is still really quick if you're doing a trade overnight. Now, this trade, I, I put this trade in here. This was the biggest trade that we've done this month, okay? I put this trade in here because everybody that did it made a huge amount of money, but I really put this trade in here so that you can see how you have to be in it to win it. What do I mean? You don't know when you're gonna get the big ones. I didn't know that this was gonna be a huge trade. I just thought this would be a normal trade that we did. I'm gonna show you what it was in a minute, 
But the fact is, you don't know when you're going to get the big ones. You know when you know because you have to participate. You have to be in the market. You have to be long or short of whatever you are. And you have to have the right pick. And that is so important because if you don't have the right pick and if you're not in the right direction, you're not going to make any money at all, let alone have big winners, okay? So first of all, I was talking about gaps. And again, I know this is a new concept for some of you, but I'm going to explain what is a gap. A gap is when a stock closes at one price, which every stock in the market closes at 4 o'clock Eastern time and it opens the next day at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. I'm in New York. I live in Manhattan, so I'm on Eastern time zone. You can be anywhere in the world, though, and trade the U.S. stock market, just so you know. So this was FTX, all right? This closed here. This was the 15th. This was the 15th of September. It closed at one price at 4 o'clock and opened at a different price the next morning on September 16th at 9.30 in the morning. So this is a gap, okay? It closed at one price, opened at a different price. In this, in this case here, it was a bearish gap. So the stock opened lower than where it closed. Now, I'm also going to show you a bullish gap. We didn't play this, but I'm gonna show you this. A bullish gap is where you have a four o'clock close, and then the next day it opens higher. And actually, theoretically, you could have gone long this year if you got in, got out, and made money. I did not do that. But actually, that was a green bar. It had a rally on that day and a gap up. Okay? Now, what did we do? We were short this in puts. So I called on September 7th, way before the 16th. I'm going to go back and show you in a minute. Actually, it expired on the 16th. It went the last day. I called the 195 FDX puts that expired on the 16th, and I called them on the 7th. Now, I'm going to go back here, right there. So, FDX closed here, gap down. I called, take it to the right. I called the 195s. We actually did drop slightly down on that particular day. Trade was up a little bit. Then the trade rallied. And then it fell out of the sky. You can see here where this opened, it was like $35 for the strike. Okay? This is a daily chart of FDX. The cost of the trade was really relatively cheap for this price point of the stock. I don't consider FDX inexpensive. It's kind of pricey. Cost was $3. Contract number, if you took an advance risk of 25 contracts, the risk was $7,500, sold at sold it $34. I think it went up close to $40 that day was a high of the options trade. I have to go back and check it. It was crazy, crazy where it went that day because it was so far through the strike. Profit on this one trade was 1,033%, and with a $7,500 risk, it was $77,500. If you took four contracts, you could have made $12,400. Again, a massive return on investment. It literally sliced through the strike and fell out of the sky. Now, how can something like that happen? There's many reasons. I don't know if anyone remembers this particular move in the day because it was all over the news. Again, I talk on the news, we were talking about this. The CEO of FDX came out on the 15th, the day before, okay, on this day, and was talking about the fact that we're gonna have a slowdown, a recession, and all kinds of things, and then it created a big sell-off in the stock, and actually the market was down that particular day too. So did I think this trade would go? Yes. Did I know it was going to be over 1,000% return investment? No. But again, you have to get the big ones in order to get the money. But this goes back to my point at the beginning. This is momentum. This is a $35 move, literally in a week, okay? And that to me is a short time for an overnight. You also could have shorted this as a day trade too if you wanted to. So again, this was an option. This was a newsletter that I sent out at 10 a.m. in the morning. I plopped in here an example of one of many, many emails that I got from clients. This was Bill. He was new to the options newsletter doing gaps with me, and he made over $13,000 on this trade. He, had a great, he did a great job. He got a better fill than me. Um, he got a lower price in it and a better fill in it. He had a fabulous day in this. The point I want to make is that real people are doing this and real people are trading. And I always get these questions because when people are trying to trade and attempting to trade and failing at trading the market and making money, they get frustrated over years, over years. You're just not doing the right thing if you're not making money. I mean, it's as simple as that. Just like I said, people bought the market on Friday. That was nuts. That was nuts. Okay. 
That wasn't the right thing to do no matter what. Even if we bounce on Monday, it still wasn't the right thing to do, okay? But the fact is that real people are doing it with me and successful, so it is possible to do it. Bill sent me this picture. This is so sweet of him and his wife. So he's new. He's new. He, he just started, and he got that trait. And he's new to this concept, this concept of gaps. For me, it's all about looking for the footprints of institutional money. So what happened in FDX? In FDX, institutions dumped it. They dumped it out of the sky. A stock can't go from, you know, 200 and change, boom, down to 160 overnight. Remember, this is from 4 to 930. That's not a long time, okay? The post market closes and then you have a close and then the pre-market opens and has an open, but this is like very fast, people, okay? It's a dump. It's an institutional dump. It was selling that came in and pushed the stock price down. We can talk all day long about fundamentals. I make trading decisions based on technical analysis. But in this case here, the fundamentals actually matched up with the technicals, okay? I'm talking about that in a little bit here. Someone's asking about it, about taking the trade. So we're looking for the footprints of institutional money. Big money that comes into a stock, it can go to the upside too. It can, you, we go long too. We've gone long some things this year, okay? But again, a lot of institutions are doing what? They are selling their long positions in the market. You've seen that in stocks. You've seen that in big stocks. Tesla sold off the last two days and that stock's very strong. Tesla's in an uptrend. Tesla's not in a downtrend. It's in an uptrend, but it's gotten dumped in the last two days, okay? So every time you look at anything at all, any chart, any decision that you wanna make a trade in, whether you go long or short, you have to look at who is in charge, the bulls or the bears. Because if you wanna make money going long, then you better get the bulls on your side. If you wanna make money to the downside, shorting or doing a put, then you need the bears on your side. Otherwise, you're gonna lose. So for me, it is about a method to spot institutional money. So I developed a process. It took me three years to create my system. I go through a checklist in the morning to determine the best pick to see, are institutions going to come in and buy the stock or short it? That is the process I go through. And it is an analysis that I go through in the morning in the pre-market that I get up early and do it early. You could go through and take you about 30 minutes to do it. I do not rush the process. I get up and start grading gaps about 7 a.m. in the morning. But that is the whole system that I teach everyone that comes to me and wants to learn to trade my method in a class that I teach once a month. That class is a 14-hour class. So again, a lot of people just want to take pot shots. They want to buy on support, okay? You can look at charts and you can set up moving averages and you can set up Fibonacci's and you can set up everything in the world. But if everything in institutional money is going against you, it doesn't matter if the stock is holding on support like, like what happened in Friday. We bounced on support Friday and people bought the market into the close. And so, and I'm telling you right now, that was the wrong thing to do, okay? Even if it holds for a day or a week, it still was the wrong thing to do. But it's all about looking at really who is in charge. So I'm following the moves in institutional money making the market. I'm capturing those moves in a small time frame, and I'm looking at the daily chart to do it. But for me, not only do I look at gaps, I'm also looking at the short side, okay? So speaking of institutional money, the benefits of shorting is what? You get fast moves. You get big moves. Again, FDX was a big move. I'm not saying that we never got a move like that to the upside in a call or a long or a, a, an overnight call. No, we did a couple years ago, 2019, I think was the year we were in BYND when it first came out. We were in that stock and calls and it gapped up huge and we had, a, we had a similar move in that stock. But I'm telling you that shorting moves happen big and they happen fast, more so than longs. Again, the rationale for it is what? because of fear and panic selling. Because really there's no rush. If I said, oh, you could go long Apple if you want to, you're like, well, let me think about it a little bit. You're, there's no panic involved in doing it. You're like, well, let me think about it a bit a bit. You, you know, there's no rush, okay? Either the stock rallies, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, there's no rush, okay? Panic buying is very, very rare. Actually, it was something that you saw in that BYND a couple years ago. It was, it was soon after the issue came out. 
I think it was 2019. But panic buying is rare. Panic selling is not rare, okay? And actually happens quite often. And that is really what I'm looking for every single day when I'm trying to analyze what stock to do and make the pick. It happens because of fear. So again, this whole concept, when you think about it, it actually makes a lot of sense. I clip this here, this is a 15 minute chart. This goes back from 826. This is a spy. What happened here? Boom, I don't know if anybody remembers this. This was 826, we had a, ma I remember it was a Friday. It was a Friday, it was a Friday in August. This was, it was a month ago, today's September 24th. This was a month ago, it, it feels like longer, but actually it, it was only a month ago when we had a, just a straight down sell off power trend day to the downside on 826. In fact, I don't even remember the reason that we sold off that day, not that it matters, but you can see it right here. And this is a 15 minute going back since then, okay? I find institutional moves by looking for the gap and then I go through a process in the pre-market in the morning, which is a checklist that I go through to determine if it's going to get bought by institutional money or shorted or sold, okay? So a big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market stocks, creates momentum and sets the trend in charts. When you're looking for institutional money, you're really reading the side of power in a stock. And I will say this also, we will go against the trend. So this is not all trend trading, just so you know. Like for example, you could have shorted Tesla last week and made money even though the Tesla trend is up. You want to be in the side of the power in order for you to make money trading because that's how you're gonna make money. And institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. And I think that's, a, that's something that people miss out on when they're trying to minutia hone something down, looking at individual you know, uh, indicators that they're using on their charts, and it's, they're not working this year. They're just not working, and so people are losing, okay? It really requires becoming a specialist in defining where the institutions are buying or selling a stock. This is what I teach in my class. Again, it's 14 hours. It's not something that I'm gonna be able to teach you today in an hour even if I wanted to. People pay me for the information and my time and it's a compli complicated system. Once you learn it, you will know how to do it. But until you do, you don't understand it. But it all has to do with advanced technical analysis. Now, if you're a person that loves to read stuff and you love the fundamentals about stuff, fine. If it matches up with the technicals, which we've had and seen this year in different times when the economic data has come out or when the Fed has talked and it's matched up with the technicals. But then again, there's been times you can rewind back 2021, even 2020. We had bad data, bad data, and the market was rallying. So it does not always match up, okay? But it is very important to look at what's happening in the price action and charts. You can't ignore that. If you're ignoring that and looking at the fundamentals, you're missing out. And you could be in it for a, a lot of pain, okay, in, in order till that those two, two things come to intersect. Like a lot of people right now are looking for a quote unquote long opportunities. They're like, oh my God, this is so cheap. The market's down almost 50% in the spy and the queues. Not quite, but almost from the rally. People should not be looking for long opportunities at this point. Why? We could still go another 25% down. Who's to say? Do you know what I mean? So comprehending how to redefine and trade with this power will have a huge positive impact on your profitability as a trader. Elevate yourself, your trading, and your profits to a higher level of consistency and success by learning how to read the footprints of institutions trading in the market. It's, it's about looking at gaps. It's about the power that comes in the gap and this has the ability to pay you. A lot of people, again, want to scalp because they're so afraid they're going to lose. So they'll take a trade, and maybe they take a trade with size, and they take a couple thousand shares. I'm talking about a mar trade on margin, or even an option, for example. Maybe they take a, a large contract position, but they want to get out really quick because they're so scared it's going to go against them or lose, and the market's been volatile this year. That's true. We had a big rally up in the summer, and then it failed, okay? We're already through that point. And now everybody's scared and they don't know what to do. Again, we could hold here, but if we do, my take on it is it's not for long. So the reality is the market's in a position right now, we got three months left in the year and one week, that's it. 
we will not make a brand new all-time high in the, in the stock market at all between now and the rest of the year. That I can tell you right now with 100% conviction. So, you know, if you're looking to trade, you have to look for individual stocks and individual one day or two day plays in the market because you've got to make money in the momentum, in the moves, because if you're looking for a follow through the upside or even to the downside, you've been having a difficult time finding that this year. You've had to get your timing right even if you wanted to hold a short. Do you know what I'm saying? So again, let's talk about where I get in these positions. I get in in a gap because everything I do is based on a gap. So what is a gap? We were talking about earlier. A stop gas when the opening price today is a different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Simple. Very, very simple. Okay. So can you go long every bullish gap? No. Can you short every bearish gap? No. Can you do the reverse in everyone? No. Do gap fills work? No. People get confused about that too. While sometimes a gap can quote unquote fill itself, but that really doesn't make any sense at all. That's not a way to play it and it doesn't consistently work. Something that you do, you want to do that's gonna consistently work. And also it should work in any market conditions. It should work when the market is bullish and it should work when the market is bearish. And my, my read on the market, I'll just tell you right now, is the market is still in an uptrend in the queues and the SPY. I know I'm probably the only one that's saying that, but I don't make decisions based on percentages off the high. And I've said that on television. Now, I may change my tune in the next week or two. But the reality is, as of right now, the market is still holding the uptrend in both the QQQs and the SPY. And this is based on my reading of gaps and technical analysis. So let's take a look here at some bullish gaps and bearish gaps. Again, what is a gap? This is a QQQ. It's closed here, gapped up, rallied. This was back, again, feels like a million years ago, when you see where the market closed on Friday. But at one point, this was September 9th, people. Look, this is the 12th. We are on the 50 period moving average right here, snug as a bug, just a couple of weeks ago. That wasn't like last year, people. Look where the market closed on Friday. Look where this, how this looked very different the first week of September. Look at that. And, and anyways, this is an example of a bullish gap. Now, this is an example of a bearish gap. We did play this. Closed here, gap down, fell. Market closed here. And then gap down right in here. And you could have shorted this. And you could have done a put. And then it dropped, dropped. That was back in August. After that big rally. Remember that rally? That was the rally we were talk I was talking about in from the June 16th, 17th lows that rallied in June, rallied in July, rallied half the month of August, and then we lost it. Actually here, you can see it better here. I clipped the whole thing. So here was, this was June, this is June 17th in the SPY. Here's the rally. This is the gap in the SPY I just was talking to you about. Here's the gap in the Qs. That was early September. So again, there are bullish gaps, there are bearish gaps. I prefer to short. I prefer to short. Again, it's not that I don't like to go long, but I do prefer to short. So we did a, another put in the SPY. We did it on that day I showed you the market sold off on the 26. This was very reasonably priced at $3. 517% return on investment. Just a huge trade. We got the 415s. Let's go back. The 26 here. Here's the big fat day that I showed you in the 15 minute that we sold off like a hot cake. We did the 415 puts, fell down, boom, boom, boom. And you actually could have held this as crazy as it seems. This came down to 390. I did not hold that into the last day. The, you could have made even more than 500% return investment if you held it the last day. It was so far through the strike, so far through the strike. One of the things with options that you have to get right is not only direction, but again, aggressive entries is something that I really focus on so that we can get in early. You can decide if you want to hold it. You can decide if you want to get out quick, or you can divvy up your position if you want to take four. You can get out of two, hold two, whatever you want to do. But again, it's all about momentum, like we were talking about at the beginning. What is that? That's momentum, people. It's a big, fat, red bar to the downside, okay? And again, with volume. So who is making that move? Institutional money is making that move, but we're in super duper early, 10 a.m., okay? 
If you took a beginner risk of three contracts, I mean, of four contracts with a $3 risk, you could have made $6,200. Again, this is an exit of the first drop down, one, two. It's not holding it into the last day, but you could have. It was an insane move. It went 25 bucks through the strike, okay? So we do puts and we also do day trades. But either way, everything that I do is about the gap. They have huge opportunity when I look for these golden gaps and find them because they spot the power of money. And it's the whole idea that power of money is in charge. It's, it's, it just is. Even if you think it's not there, it is. Power of money is in charge of the stock's direction. Trends are set and moved by the power of money people, of which was a lot of in the market. What do I mean? I mean big hedge funds, medium-sized hedge funds. I mean professional traders, banks, okay? Banks have trading desks. You can look at the banks right now. The financials are getting killed. But gaps happen in the market pretty much every day. They happen in the market on a regular basis. However, some gaps are better than others. The power is in the gaps, but you can't play every gap. So I developed a system to find the special gaps. I term, I coined the term golden gap, but it's the, I find the good ones, okay? The ones that are powerful displays of institutional money. The ones that are important, that signify a change of direction or a bigger move in the same direction, either way. Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you to know what to do and when a change is occurring. And that's how you know when the power of money will flow to pay you and you can take it and get in. Another one we did, now I didn't show the follow through of this. This Nike sold off, Nike came all the way down, Nike broke 100, Nike broke 99. We did a day trade in Nike. I'm showing you this here on the 20th, but after this day, 21, 22, 23, we, we tanked in Nike. You can pull it up and look at it yourself. But we did this on this one particular day. It was a day trade where you would take this trade on margin. So if you wanna open up a margin account, you have to have a margin account at a retail broker, or you can go to a prop broker. You can get four to one margin at a retail place, you can get 10 to one at a prop place. We don't always do expensive stocks like this, but sometimes we do. The entry was 103.90, 3,500 shares was a risk of 31.50, we put in a stop. If it stops me out, then I'm gonna lose, okay? This was a trade that was in the stats at the beginning that I showed you. We're in, we're out, we're in, we're out. This is a quick trade in several minutes, we're out. I'll show you, I'm just gonna show you the one minute in a second. The profit was 33.25. When I'm doing a day trade on margin, I'm looking for one turnover, one to one. This is close enough. It's a little, little bit more, but actually I wanna show you this continued further. It actually went all the way down, broke 102. So if we did this trade here, got in, get out quickly, but I wanna show you, it actually went more than another dollar if you held it into the afternoon. Now, typically I play the morning, I'm in and out. So this is a one minute chart. Here's the gap, stock close here, gap down, rallying. We shorted it, got the drop. This over here, again, was the low of the day in here. I did not hold it into two o'clock. You could have been in the trade, it would have held all day. You could have held it down if you wanted to. We did an option in this too. I don't have that in here. But the but the chart itself on the daily fell, of course, with the market in the last few days. So that was, again, a day trade, a trade on margin. But the foundation for taking that Nike trade and the FDX trade and the SPY was because it, it was a gap. And then I rated it using my system to see that it would actually follow through lower, so we shorted it. Whether it was a put, which is a short as an option, or a day trade short, we are shorting it on your platform. But either way, the reason, or the foundation for taking the trade is a gap. Like if someone said to me, well, I'm going long on support, why? I mean, probably people can't really explain that. They could say, well, it's on blah, 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 moving average. But that's really not a strategy. It may be something you do that's an entry, but that's not a strategy. It's not the core foundation for why you're taking it. And I think, again, that's one of the reasons why people struggle with trading. They're doing things that are entries. They're not, they're, they're not a strategy. So you this is an entry here that we did in out, okay? The strategy was the gap itself, two different things. So again, a stock gap from the opening price today is different from the closing price of the previous day's trading. A gap is a break in the price action from one day to the next. You get gaps all the time. You can pay for a scanner to find gaps. Jeff was talking about that earlier. Just sign up, pay for it, boom. You'll find a thousands and thousands and thousands every day. 
okay? There's a plethora of gaps out there, but not all gaps are good, okay? Here's another one. This is BA. You can see the nice, beautiful move this had on Friday. This stock closed here, gap down, fell. That was Friday the 23rd, okay? Again, you can see here where this bounced in the June lows. This was, uh, I think this is the 15th that BA bounced. Now, what if you're a beginner? Can you trade as a beginner? Sure, you can trade as a beginner. You can open up an options account with as little as $2,000. Options are not, uh, you can trade options with just a cash account. You don't need a margin account to trade options. You do need a margin account if you're going to do day trades or equity trades, like for example, the Nike trade. Now, here was another option we did. This was in NVIDIA. Uh, this one was, what day was this one? Nine one. We did a NVIDIA put. This this was a while ago now. This fell off a of planet too. I don't even know where this closed on Friday. 145 puts we did. Cost was $6, two contracts. Risk was 1,200, you could have made $1,400. Again, you're looking to turn it over one. That's a good trade, that's a solid trade. If you had $5,000 in your account, you could have done this trade and look how much of a percentage you would have made of your account in, that, in such a short time, like more than 20%. So again, if you're, a new person, a beginner, doing options sometimes can really grow your account rather quickly. Similar thing with the FDX trade. Oh, I thought I had the NVIDIA chart in here. I guess I don't. I'll show that at the end here if we have time. Any questions here as I'm going along? Let me look and see if I missed anything. Any questions while I'm talking this through? So again, even with the options, I'm doing directional trades. I'm doing directional trades where if I rate the gap and it's lower, we're buying the put and we're selling it. If I rate the gap up and it's higher, we're buying a call and I'm selling it, okay? If I see a gap down and we're gonna day trade it, which we did like in the Nike, then I'm gonna short it on margin and I do it as a day trade when I'm in and out quick. So I run a live trading room where I'm calling these trades live, but it's all about just chunking it out. You can hold options overnight. You can get big moves doing that. But again, we're not doing leaps. We're not doing long-term things. I mean, how, who can even say? If you said to me, you know, where's the market going to be or where's Apple going to be as of January 30th, 2023? Nobody could even say that right now. Look at where the market's been the last nine months. If you rewind 12 months ago, no one would have ever thought we'd be at this point. It's just like the Fed trying to predict inflation and where, you know, where or how long they think it's going to take to get inflation down to 2%. They, they've been wrong all along. They've been wrong for the last two years. They don't even know, you know? But everything that I do, it looks at 26 points. If you come and you wanna learn my method, this is what you'd learn. It's the meat and potatoes of what I do. It's a rating system that I go through and I rate everything in the morning and I say, okay, Nike, NVIDIA, FDX, they all rank good enough to do what? To short in these cases here. Again, I prefer to short. This was another day trade that we did. This was Marvell. This was pretty medium priced. Entry was 5335, 1500 shares, risk 3225. We didn't add in this. So it pulled my price slightly down, but I saw it was running. You can do that if you have a bigger target in mind. 5052 was the exit profit was 8100. This was a fabulous day trade. Again, we we're talking about momentum, selling, panic, fear. What happened here? This was the same day that the market fell. We had the market on our side. We sold off all day like a hot cake. This close to your gap down fell, boom. And we hit it. And we hit it. This was a really nice trade. Um, let me go see. There's a couple questions here. Uh, these are day trades. No, they're day trades, not swing trades. Uh, if you're doing, going to do an overnight, you should do an option. Why? Because an option has a fixed risk. If you're doing a swing trade, you basically have unlimited risk, okay? You, you need to have your account set up to short a margin. It should not be difficult to short at any broker at all. Uh, what do you mean post the gap? Well, well, you see the gap happens and then you see it. I don't know if that's what you mean. Um, I don't know what you mean by IV crush within the first hour. You lost me there. I don't understand that question. We wait for the gap, then I rate it, then I play it if it rates good. I don't understand your question about crush. 
How many hours in the morning am I trading? Very, like not even an hour. If we, if I, if I even keep the room open till 10, 30, 11, that's a long day. Many of these trades, I open up the room at nine, we start trading at 9.30, 9.35, and then we could be done before 10. If I'm still in a trade by 10, 30, 11 o'clock, that's a long trade, that's a late trade. <coughs> so the room is usually open for a half an hour, hour a day. I'm not trading long. If I'm gonna hold something long, then I'm doing an option. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it's easier to hold something and an option to wait for the move. In a day trade, I must be flat before four. Otherwise, I'm not gonna get the margin. You know, I'll go from four to one margin to two to one margin or cash, I don't wanna do that. I exit all my trades before four and I try to exit everything if I can quick in the morning. Now, I'm not gonna kill something if I'm waiting it out. And sometimes I do afternoon trades, but that is so rare, so rare that it's like hardly ever. No, I don't do futures at all. I do equity trading and I find it to be very profitable. And I think one of the reasons that people veer towards futures is because they can trade with small amounts of money. That should not be your reason to decide to do any one particular type of trading. You could trade options with a small amount of money if you think $2,000 is small. If you have less than $2,000 and you want to trade, in my opinion, you should really wait to save till you have, you have more money. You know, if you're someone that's really strapped for cash, you should wait and save till you have more money to trade. Because every trade that you take, you're putting money on at risk. And you don't want to put yourself in a position where you can't afford to lose. Does that make sense? So if you're trading with me, we take 10 trades, Sam, look at, talking about on average, you got to figure about seven and a half are going to win and about two and a half are going to lose on average so you can't risk your whole account in one trade and you can't trade with next to no money i would save up till you get to a position where you can open an options account with two thousand dollars uh you're talking about uh oh you're talking about i trade okay you're talking about something that i don't do I don't, I'm not looking at the time value or the decay. I'm looking at the momentum. So for example, if the stock has a big move and I'm getting in the right direction, the trade's gonna go in my favor. I don't care about time decay. If it doesn't go in my favor, then I'm gonna lose no matter what. Does that make sense? Uh, let me go back to the market one. Oh, no, I did have the NVIDIA chart. I skipped over it. I skipped over it. Here. Uh, here was the day we did this. Let me quick show you. That was the day we did the, the NVIDIA put. Someone's asking about time decay. Let me just go back here to the market. So this trade, for example, here that we did, the 415 puts, the person that asked me the question about that. Let's say the market, this was a 26, they expired the second. Let's say the market rallied. Let's say this didn't do that. Let's say it flipped and it rallied up here. The trade would have lost. Whether it did that in a series of five days or six days or two days and then just kind of pittered off, if it if it if it went the opposite direction meaning it went the opposite direction of the momentum i'm trying to get remember this was a put so the momentum i'm looking for in this case is to the downside if i had gotten momentum to the upside the trade would have lost like if this had happened here pretend that happened here it didn't but pretend it did it wouldn't have mattered how many days i had left or anything else at all it was going in the wrong direction does that make sense so again, if I get a move, momentum move, then the trade's gonna go. And when I'm losing a trade, it, it goes bust. And I just lose in it because it doesn't go in my favor. Does that make sense? So I'm not worried about 25, 50 cents, 75 cents in, in options decay, because I'm not trying to eke out a squeeze out pennies on the dollar for my profit you see, you, I mean, you can see these trades here. You know, I'm looking for 
50%, 100%, 200%. I'm looking for huge returns on investment if I'm going to hold something. Ideally, if it goes the first day, we get a really, 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 really big move, you know. But you could get a 50% move the first day and get out. I've done that on trades before. There's nothing wrong with 50% return on investment either. Uh, what was I saying? I showed you the NVIDIA. Okay, we talked about Marvell. Anyways, once you learn how to find the momentum, it's really not hard to make money. It's that a lot of people don't understand that and they're doing the wrong thing. So we also did a short in the market, which again, you could have done a put in this if you didn't want to do it on margin because it was expensive. Entry was 392.35, shares 1500, risk 29.25. We did an add in this, plopped it on, huge trade here. This was on 9.1, let's take a look at it. Again, this doesn't even look like much. It doesn't even look like much at all, but it was a beautiful trade. Stock close here, gap down, boom, fell, we got in, out. So I was asking how long do I trade? Quick, sh short, boom, 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 in and out. Here it is. Market close here, gap down. We shorted it, got the drop, out, done. 10 o'clock, 10.15, done. Okay. So again, I don't mess around when I'm day trading. And again, I'm calling these trades live in the room, but it's, it's about having a focus, a daily focus. One pick a day is all you need. Professional traders have specialized strategy systems and reasons for taking trades. A lot of people don't have reasons for taking trades. They think they do, but they don't. It's really just an entry or something that they're doing, but there's no structure behind it. There's no system behind it. The system and the strategy is what allows me to be get these kinds of trades, number one, that have big profits, and number two, to be very effective, like I'm throwing a bullseye like a dart to get hit a bullseye when I'm trying to get something on a Thursday, on a Friday, on a Monday, okay? I'm trying to hit one bullseye every day. That's it. That's all I need. I don't need to hit 10 bullseyes. And when I hit it, then I'm done, okay? So I'm looking for a high probability of direction of bias for the entire day, a big move in the day, preferably. Early confirmation. Got to get it in the morning, out of the gate and precise entries with follow through and a good risk reward. But I'm analyzing the large time frame of the daily and then making entry decisions and exit decisions on the one minute chart. That is both things that you would learn in the class from me. You'd learn how to rate the gap. You'd learn how to take all the entries that I do. And then you would learn how I exit as well. But using the one minute chart allows for good risk to reward trades, but the checklist really tells me what to pick. This is also how it's helped me read the market read the market right for this year and really um you know make the kind of predictions that i made to you earlier that the market will not make a brand new all-time high before the end of the year which a lot of people think it could we might have a christmas rally but we're not going to be near the highs and we do have earnings season starting in october it's going to be a very profitable time to trade when earnings season comes out but even if we rally from where we are here we won't make it up by that point but everything i do is I use a checklist. That checklist is a plan of action. It's, it, it, it tells me what to focus on. You know, I'm not in a chat room taking ideas blind, okay? I don't have the TV on and I'm taking ideas blind from people. You, you have to write it down. Why are you doing this? Plan it, look at your risk, look at the targets, look at everything you're doing. Do I really wanna do this thing? You know, I think people, once they trade for a while, they become, become sort of desperate, actually. Desperate to make money, desperate to be successful, desperate to get the losses back that they've had for the last umpteen trades they've taken, that they haven't made money or even classes that they took where they didn't feel like they got their money's worth. You have to have a fresh new outlook. What you're doing is say, tomorrow, Monday morning, I'm going to get up and I'm going to do something completely different because what I was doing wasn't working. If what you're doing is working, keep doing it, okay? But a lot of people attempt to trade, fail at the beginning, and then flounder for years, okay? So if you're one of those people floundering, winning, losing, winning, losing, but at the end of the year losing, stop, take a break, pull back, and change what you're doing, okay? That could be coming to me and taking my class, learning something completely new, but don't keep losing money, okay? It just, it's stupid, actually, all right? And in today's day and age, you can't do that. You can't. When, when you go to the store and everything costs more, you know, I know they're saying inflation's, what, 13% they said now or something crazy? That's ridiculous. I, I shop at the grocery store for myself. I order in Manhattan. I have food delivered. I mean, there's things I'm buying now that are 100% more than they were a year ago. Because I can tell. I can go on to my thing and see what I paid 
in, in my checklist in my, in my Amazon. I mean, it's crazy. So you have to think about what you're doing with your money. Think, 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 okay? All my thinking is in the morning when I'm going through the checklist. My checklist is my plan of action. Everyone that puts money into the market should have a plan of action and a checklist. On a professional level, all high income career field specialists have a checklist. If you were a pilot, if you were a surgeon, you have a checklist, okay? I'm not gonna go operate on somebody without going through the checklist. You, you have to think about what you're doing and a lot of people don't, all right? So again, why are gaps so profitable? Because they're created with large institutional money and they're an event. It creates a sense of urgency. Remember, we're talking about panic. That's an action that's being forced by participants of the stock. They have to do something, they have to do it right now. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power money. For example, what does bullish institutional money look like? This has been a nice chart. Now this did sell off in the last couple of days with everything else, I know. But this is one of the strongest things out there. You want a bullish pick? Here you go, Ulta. Beautiful chart. Look at how this has held up with the market this year. This was through the 12th, but, and it fell somewhat in here. But this is still super duper strong. Love this chart, okay? What about bearish institutional money? Dell, we did this one. This was a really good one in here. This was, again, a gap down, fell off a planet. This is large institutional money selling, selling the stock, okay? The course is a two-day live course. It is October 1st and 2nd, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. You must be there live. You will want to be there live so you can participate, ask questions, and obviously get the most out of it that you can get out of it if you want to learn it, which you want to learn it. Learning it is essential. So then you understand it. Yes, there's people like Bill that are taking the trades and they're just taking them. But understanding it is really important too. Why? So that you can risk more or maybe hold a little bit more. Do you know what I mean? Maybe take on a little bit more risk. But don't waste time trading without getting anywhere. It just makes no sense. And a lot of people just, I don't know, they just, they do waste time. It, I don't know why people do it. I guess they hope one day they'll wake up and something will be different, but people just really waste years of their life not getting anywhere with the market. It's you got to get to the point that time is too precious to waste. If you don't realize that now after COVID, after 2020, I don't, I don't know if you ever will. You're, you know, your financial freedom counts. You have to learn how to trade properly. It's an investment. It's an investment in your own success and your future, but it can well pay off. So Bill paid $69.99 and he made almost 14 grand in one trade. So, you know, and that was his first month. I think he was two weeks into the program. So, you know, who knows what we'll get tomorrow? Who knows what we'll get this week? I don't know. I don't plan that far ahead. I get up in the morning every day and I look for the gap and I rate the gap. This is Daryl. He's been doing extremely well too. He's one of these people that just goes right after it. He just goes right after it. And, um, and he's in the room every day as well. So again, I'm teaching people how to do this. I'm here if you have any questions. If you'd like a trial for the live trading room for this week, email me at melissathestockswish.com. If you're interested in the class, you can email me too, but it is a two-day class where you learn the rating system. It teaches you how to play the stock on the day. You do need to empower yourself to train. It is a complete system to use how to train. And again, you can go to my website, which is www.thestockswish.com. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are bearish, professional bearish gaps. The class is online. It is $69.99. It's October 1st and 2nd, 9 to 5. If you have questions, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. I'm doing a Twilight Zone special because Sci-Fi had a marathon this past weekend, and I love the Twilight Zone. I don't know if anybody else here loves it. But if you sign up by Wednesday, September 28th, you get the trading room free for one year, so this is a good deal. Again, I call... The trains live in the room with the entries, the exits, and the stops. And it is a class on how to find, pick, and play professional bearish gaps. You must email me if you want to sign up. You must email me if you want a trial. Uh, what else? I'm teaching about gaps. Yep, that's everything that I do. If I do an option, it's based on the gap. If I do a day trade, it's based on the gap. It's one system that you can use to do day trades or options or both. Personal like both because of the fact that you can hold the options overnight 
And so I'm taking slightly more risk in those because some of those trades are more expensive and I want the bigger moves. But again, the day trades, if you just wanna focus on the day trades in the room, that's fine too. No, the class is live. Someone asked. I know we started a little late, so I went a little bit over. I hope that was okay, Jeff. Thank you so much for having me. Oops.